is Erica Shablis and I am going to do a um, pretty quick video on doing a basic bag. I'm doing one from Parker on the porch. Going to the jump drive and then I'm going to go over to the bag. Let's see this one. I've already flipped it in my in Brilliant software. And I'm going to walk you through it. Hold on. We're going to get this one here. Let me see, okay. It is loaded and I'm ready to start my bag. The first thing I need to do is hoop my stabilizer and we're going to use cutaway. I do not use a tear away on my bags because you will hear the crunch sound. So I'm just going to get a little cutaway real quick. Big enough for your hoop. I'm doing the 8x12 bag. I've not done an 8x12 bag before because I had a 10 hoop, 6x10. So, turn the camera on and I'll show you what I do. So, we're going to place this stabilizer. And after you've placed your stabilizer, because I'm going to do my bag upside down, I need to make sure my U is going towards me. So we're going to hoop it. All right, now that it's hooped, I'm going to go over to the machine. I just took my hoop off and I drew the center point so I can get it on here and get it in the right place. So now that I have my um, center point drawn on my stabilizer, I'm just going to hit the set start button to do a trace. And I'm just making sure, yeah. All right, I think we're good to go. All right, once you find your file and load it in, I'm going to go here to the three um, images of the thread and then I'm going to uh, add some stops so I can actually create the bag because you need to stop and add things to the to your hoop. So the very first step is the placement for your uh, bag. So that's going to go all the way around your basic bag. Um, I'm doing a red bag so I want the um, color to match. Um, the what I'm doing so when you create when you put down your your zipper and your fabric you want those colors to match so whatever size your bag is your zipper needs to be bigger than that and I don't have any white zippers so I'm gonna go with black so my very first step um, is gonna give me a placement outline for my zipper so I'm just gonna go ahead and go with black which that number is six all right, and so it's going to just do my placement and then once it does my placement I'm actually going to place this down and I want my stitching on top of my um, zipper to actually be black as well so I'm gonna go six for the placement and six for the tack down of the zipper after it tacks it down it is going to give me a placement for where to put my first part of my fabric and it's going to be red so i'm just going to go go ahead and go with red it's going to place it down uh, give me a placement and i'm going to place the fabric down and then after let's see yep so now you should see that now it's putting the fabric down then the next step i want it to stitch on top of that fabric before i put down my uh, lining the first piece of my lining so I'm going to go with the letters and now you see that it's going to stitch that down after it stitches the the whatever your logo your design whatever it is you're putting there after it does that then you want to tack down your your uh, first part of your lining and it's going to be red so I'm going to go with that that's for that and then the next thing it does 
Now with the original file, it does like little placements for your side pieces, but I'm gonna turn mine into a clutch. So I deleted those steps. And it's gonna do the next thing, which is to place the back side of my bag. And because I'm doing a black zipper, I think I may go with color black and make the back of my bag black. So let's go with that. And then the last step, Hopefully we should be on the last step. Um, it's going to do the lining inside. And do I want black? I think I'll stick with black. No. All right, so what I need to do now is make sure I have stops. So the very first one, I'm gonna put a stop. And then the second one to put my zipper down, I'm gonna do a stop. And the next one is going to give me a placement and the next one is gonna tack it down. Now this one here where it does the uh, white lettering, it can actually do the white lettering and, no, we'll stop it. And then I'll tack down the lining and I'm gonna stop it. And then this will be the back of the bag and stop it. So I wanna stop on everything except the last step when you're doing these bags. Every step, just stop it. And so we're gonna put it up on all those. I'm gonna click okay to make sure it's locked in. Say okay. That's the outline of the bag, and now it's going to do the placement for the zipper. Now, because my bag is upside down, I just have to visualize how I want my zipper to go. Normally, uh, in my NQ1700E, it is going this direction to my, to the left of the bag. Would that be the left? Yes, the left of the bag. So I'm gonna continue with that. This one is super long. I forgot how many inches this was. You just need to make sure, this particular bag is 12 inches, so I would need like a 14 or 16 inch zipper. And this is the only one I had that was this size. This bag is a three. Um, the three zippers, their um, their teeth are different from the five. I believe I like the five. I just don't have any fives and this bag is a three. So I'm gonna place it on here and I'm gonna tape the ends down. And what you're gonna do is just make sure the those ends are not gonna hit. And this is super long, so it shouldn't. But if you have a zipper that is not as long, what you're doing is just making sure those ends are not hit. You don't want your needle to hit those. So I'm just gonna tape this down. Making sure it's as straight as possible. The teeth need to go on that middle line there. That let you know if it's straight. Some people hold, which most times I do. I do hold, but I'm going to take it. Okay, and I'm gonna press go. Tag down the top part. I am going to take it off because we're going to need to do two things, one on each side. We got to do some taping down. 
Now for this next part, you need to measure whichever bag you decide to do. I am doing the eight by 12. And what I normally do, I just kind of put it over it. But you could take a ruler and measure. And I'm gonna just make sure the edges, it comes over the edge here and over the edge there. And then you want it to go down here. So I'm just gonna cut here. Once you get to doing the bags, often you, you'll, you'll see you can do it in some quicker ways, but if you're first doing the bag, make sure you measure around. And then what I do, I just go over here. And that's where I need to cut. You can get your vinyl in different places, I believe, on some of my other videos. I've listed where I get my vinyl from. And this is way more than I needed, but that's okay. Um, Hobby Lobby, Joann's. Um, you can get a lot of places online, like um, my punk embroidery is a place that I use a lot of. So I will leave those in the description. I'm gonna lift this tape up. And sometimes I just put the tape on me in case I reuse it. And so for this part, you'll need another piece like this, but with your lining. So I'm gonna cut a piece real quick. You're gonna need two pieces of a lining, but right now you need one. And you're gonna flip it over, not the side. Oh, you know what? Let me start over. All right, right after you get the uh, zipper tack down. This is one of the most important parts. It is to get a seam ripper. You get a seam ripper and unzip this piece right here. Make sure I'm recording this. Unzip this piece right here just so you can see because what you're going to have to take that part out. This is what I suggest. Take it out now. Because if you don't, it will be very uh, difficult to do it later. So what I'm going to do... Let me see if I can get it down closer. What I'm doing is taking out um, this inner part here. This middle line. This middle line here is where you want to take it. Gently put that in there. And so you want to expose the zipper. So now that I got it in there, what I do is take my applique scissors. And one thing I see my applique. And I just love these scissors. I take these because they're not as sharp as those other ones. And then I just go and make sure I get a little to start it and then I take the little ball in it goes down and then I just run, run this against that stitch there and then when I get to the edge I curve it with the scissors See, what you're doing is taking out this piece here. So I'll turn it and I'll get it going first, like so. And then I take the scissor on um, the seam ripper and I run it against that part all the way down. And you want to make sure you don't <laughs> like I do. Well, it looks like. All right, try not to cut the stitches. Looks like I did a little bit. Don't do what I just did. <laughs> All right, so now that zipper is exposed. And I'm gonna zip it back. All right. And then we are going to flip it over. First piece of lining on the back. You need to make sure that it goes around the whole thing. All right. So 
you want to cut that out and you want to leave a piece at the bottom because you're going to tuck this in and you'll learn more about that later okay i'm just going to even this out over here and if you want to earn by all means So with this part on the back, <laughs> you're going to have it where that there's that little line there. You're gonna bring it down like so, and you're gonna tape it. Tape it good because it's gonna be underneath. I've used the, I don't know what you call that brown tape. I always get confused about the names. So you can use any other tapes. You can use painter's tape, I've used that. Use your tape. And then I just like to make sure these ends here are taped down well. So I go a different direction. All right, and then this is gonna stay up this direction because you don't want it down here yet. And so I'm gonna flip it over and now I have that facing that way I'm going to do the same thing with this side it's gonna go at the edge of that zipper just like so and I'm just making sure that it is covering on both sides of the um, zipper because what's gonna happen is this is gonna be folded down like so and it's gonna stitch on top all right, so we're gonna take that down as well. So now we're gonna do is just one quick stitch and then you can take that tape back up. And do one quick stitch across here and to place it back on I'm just kind of holding it um, underneath my uh, underneath it so that the fabric does not let me show you I want to make sure this fabric does not get caught up under there so I'm gonna press it in there like so and then it's gonna do one quick stitch here. I'm just gonna kind of do this. All right, and let's do one quick stitch. As soon as it does that quick stitch you want to immediately get that tape off because you don't want the tape in the bag it'll make all kind of sounds punchy little sounds you don't want that so i'm going to do that you can save the tape for something else or get rid of it the choice is yours all right you're going to leave the tape underneath you just want the tape off here because this now needs to go press down. And what I do, I just kind of finger press it. And when I'm normally on my flat bed, I can press down with no problems. But if you're on the bond, just put your hand under if you're not using, I don't know if you could use a table for this. Maybe you could make it a little bit better. I'm just gonna press it down and it's gonna do a stitch to stitch this down. So I tape this um, lining down because now what I want to do is the next step and it's going to attack this top part. It's going to go and I'm holding it down. 
just to get it started. Now that the top part is tacked down and I'm going to still leave my lining here taped up. And so what I'm going to do now is go with the next step, which is to tack on whatever design or logo you have before you put down your lining. So when I press go, it's going to go to my one. I'm going to we'll stitch this up. Once your design finishes, uh, you will need to pull the hoop off. So we will go back to the table. The front part is done. We're gonna flip to the back and we're gonna take this tape off. And you don't need any of the tape on the sides either because I'm gonna just reuse that. I'm just gonna stick it on my hand and I'm going to reuse my table. Now at this point, we're gonna take this piece here and we're gonna fold it down. Make sure it's smooth and then I'm just gonna take the tape and reuse it and I'm taping down the edges. You can use new tape. I'm just going to use this one. Hopefully that'll stay. All right, once that is ready, we're gonna flip it back over, holding down. I have my hand up under it so it can stay straight and go back to the machine. Once you get your hoop back on, I would be I would look under and make sure everything is flat and smooth. Let's take a look under. And so I'm looking under. And if you can see, this right here is not smooth. So I would just go under. And I would probably tape that a little bit better. So let me take that back out. So my problem is I do want some extra space, but this needs to be taped down or cut off just a little bit so I can tape it to the stabilizer here. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this off. But you do wanna leave some of the uh, fabric hanging because you'll have to tuck it in. And so what I would do, I would tape it down. Take this part. And you could cut even more of that off if you want it. I don't really want to tape on top of my hoop itself. I'll cut a little bit more next time. All right. And that way it will stay straight. Let's try it again. My hand is underneath. 
and I'm placing the hoop back on. I'm just gonna make sure it goes straight. And then I would look again and make sure everything is nice and smooth. And see if you can notice it's not, it's um, on this side instead of flipped under. You wanna make sure it's smooth. Once you get the first part of the lining taped down, it's going to do another stitch around to tack these two pieces together. Your top um, outside fabric and your in inner lining. So I'm gonna press go and it's gonna, it is going to go and tack that down. Part, we will take it off again and go back to the table when you get used to doing this it'll go much faster but for me showing you how every step is it's it's taking much longer um, and so you see that it's tacked down and I'm going to take this tape off and I'm going to add the top part backwards so let's go see how that works All right, so I'm flipping this hoop over I would leave um, the bottom part of the extra fabric taped down, but you don't need these sides. So I'm just gonna drop it down here. I mean, you could, but you don't. You don't necessarily have to have it there because this is here. Now, this is the um, one of the important steps here. Um, you have to. We, we're gonna make a clutch where a wristlet where it's just gonna be on my wrist, and I'm gonna add a piece of, um, I think I'm gonna do black. Let me get a piece of black. When I first started, and I'm, this little spot is bothering me, hold on. Wipes are good for cleaning your hoops. I'm getting all kind of other stuff up. Let me type of flip. All right, so when I was first teaching bags, I was using the, um, what do you call these things? I don't know, these little round things. <laughs> um, now I like to use what's called the D ring because it looks like a D. It's a ring. And so what you would do with whatever, if you do D rings, it has, well, either one, it has to be able to fit inside. And so this one is probably an inch. Yep, so I'm gonna get a piece of fabric and I'm just gonna get an inch, um, an inch in um, width. Let me cut a piece real quick. I'm gonna use my um, rotary cutter. You can use regular scissors. Doesn't have to be that rotary cutter. Okay. I'm just gonna get an inch. Okay, it's already an inch. Uh -oh, I did pretty good on that. Inside the D ring, I'm gonna place it inside like so. And then that, that may be a little bit less than an inch. Yeah, just a little bit. That may be that 0.75 one. I'm gonna go down just a little bit. like so. Once you size your piece, you just want enough where it's gonna catch your fabric and it's gonna tack it down. So 
So, and it's gonna be faced inside out. So, let me show you. So depending on where you want your uh, piece to go, I always go the same side as the zipper. And you're going to fold it in half and place this part, whether it's this or the, this thing here, doesn't matter which one. Or you, if you use this here, you don't even have to put this one on. You just have this piece like this. And the folded in with the flap open goes to the outside. The flap, the flap part goes inside of the of the bag. And you don't need to do this because you can just slide it on afterwards. But with the D ring, you have to um, put it on beforehand because these little rings here, split ring, that's what it's called. This split ring opens where you can slide it on later. So for the D ring, I'm gonna place it in. And depending on where you want it, I normally go just a little bit down from the top of the bag. And then I only do about this much inside because I don't like mine to be flipping like this, the outside of the bag. I want it kind of close. And I'm going to just take some tape and take it down on both sides. Tape them and you just make sure they're even like on these sides because if not it'll show on the outside of your bag. It doesn't matter about this piece being longer, but these parts right here need to be even. And then I'm just gonna tape that down. That's the first step. I have a little scene that I came up with. Uh, clip, zip, flip. So you put your clip or whatever it is you're putting on D-ring or, sp or split ring. That's your clip. Unzip, one of the most important things because if you don't do this part, you have ruined your bag. And then flip would mean you would take the back piece and flip it over. So I need a piece that's going to go over the entire bag. I'm going to get a piece real quick. And you can measure these out. At the beginning, go much faster. Sometimes I prep mine. This was an impromptu tutorial. So I did not have everything ready. But you get to see how I do it. So that's different. All right, and then I'm just gonna cut this out. And then I want this to cover the entire bag. So even up here by the zipper, and then I'm looking to see if it's going past the the, uh, the stitch line that's on the outside and then I've gotten where I don't have to tape it down but if you are a beginner please tape it down so it doesn't move on you I'm just going to tape the bottom and the top real quick and flip which is this part clip the little side piece and unzip the most important part you must unzip it all right let's go back to the machine it will go around three times, my camera died. It's on its third run. So it's gonna do four times. After it does four times around, you're just gonna have to take it off the machine again because on the back side now, we are going to add the last part of the lining. Let's go to the table. All right, for the back side, we will take, and the, the very first piece, we took it and had it going this way and we flip it over. This, the last part of the bag, 
for the um the lining it goes over the whole piece so you are covering all the stitches here all the way around and what you want to do is make sure you have a little bit left over uh, you don't have to have this much overhang but you do need enough that it can tuck both sides in so i'm going to put this piece here and then i'm going to tape around the whole thing because you don't want it to get caught up in your machine. That's what I do. Okay. And I'm leaving this up the sides tape from the previous time because I just want to make sure it's completely secure. And I'm going to tape the bottom part. Tape the sides. And take the top. So you want to go around the whole thing. And then when you put it on the machine, put your hand up under it to make sure it doesn't um, it doesn't get caught up. And again, I would look under to make sure I'm good to go. And then we'll run the last step. It'll be time to flip the back. show you how to cut it up um, cut the trim up these sides and how to turn your back just to think this is a bag done on the by in the hoop once you finish the steps in the hoop you're going to unhoop it with this and we're gonna cut the sides but not the bottom because we need we're gonna cut parts of the bottom but we have to be careful not to cut the uh, fabric that turns inside so I'll show you how to do that all right so what I'm gonna do now is cut this side and this side and the top I'm just gonna go close to the stitches, but not enough to cut the stitches. And I cut on this side versus this side because this side is in a little bit further. So you wanna make sure you cut from the top side of the bag where it has the wrong side of the bag to the back. So you cut that off. And you're gonna cut this off the same way. You can round your corners. And then just go straight down. And then you corner again. And at this point, this is where you get close to the um, tab. You can cut around the tab like so. And then go back to cutting. Or you can cut it all the way off. I'm going to leave the tab open. I know they cut them off. But I think I'm going to start doing it where it is still in the bag for some security. Okay. When you get to the bottom part, you're going to lift this piece here to the back, like fold it back. And you're going to cut off this part. So you could use your rotor cutter. I'm just going to use this for now. And notice I'm not cutting my lining pieces 
and I will be saving some of this. Like, that's a big piece. I will be saving that. The rest of this may go to the trash. If you don't cut off your tab, but you have that piece right there, you can just fold your tab back and cut it off. And then remove any tape. Remove any tape that may be on your bag still. Put that off. Yep, so the bag looks pretty good. you how to fold it in and glue the inside so I'm gonna put this I'm just going around this corner a little bit all right let's glue it my absolute favorite glue for um embroidery bags is the fabric tac the clear this one should say clear somewhere dries clear make sure it's the clear one the white one dries with a white residue and you can see it and I don't like that. So I'm going to take these, this here, so you have the opening and you're actually going to start turning it like so. And you just keep turning until you get all the way and you push it through called birth in the bag or birth in process and sewing so it's the same process all right and so I just go in here and I poke any corners out I'm just doing it with my fingers And then that gives you the inside and these two pieces it automatically flipped in for me but if it doesn't you just tuck in each side and this is the part you're gonna glue, this little opening. And you'll need some clips. I use these here, these wonder clips. I think they're called wonder clips. And then you take the fabric glue, and you only need a little bit. You don't have to put a whole lot. And I just go straight down. And then I take the top of it and I press it down. And then I go and take the clips and just go straight down. Okay. And then we're gonna let it dry for five minutes and come back and turn it back the other way. Alright, now that we have waited a few minutes, I'm just going to take these off. And the back is sealed. Then I'm going to take the zipper, get my finger inside, and unzip. And now all I need to do is turn it. And I'm going to use one of the, and I don't know the name of this tool, I need to look back and see. It helps you get out the um, the points, the rounded edges. I would not use this in. It will punch your hole, but definitely use this in. Or something with rounded edges. So I'm gonna start flipping. Turn 
turning inside out or outside in. <laughs> Start turning your back. Tool and you just go in a little corners. And it helps you get that rounded. Round it until you get it how you want it. And I just take it and I run it across the bottom. Finger press it, do the same in the other corners. Take the tip off here, if you use the D-ring. Take the tape off, because you should have had a piece there anyway. Now, normally in my videos, I would say clean this up, but because I'm on the bottom and it's cutting up pretty good, I don't have to do that. I would take something and clean that up inside. So that is your back side. Corners. And zip it up. And for presentation purposes, I usually take some, some stuff in paper. The paper comes on a roll or a package. And you can get it from, you used to be able to get it from Sam's, but I've only seen it at Walmart. Maybe. You can't order it. I'll leave the link. And I'll do is just stuff the back. It gives me the look that I'm looking for, which shows you that a lot can go in these bags. side piece right here you can make your straps sometimes I make straps and sometimes I purchase them I do have these available in my shop I think I'm gonna go with red I'm trying to match up whatever color you put on as your d-ring since I went with silver of course I'm gonna go with silver and there's a cute little bag color block Cute, cute, cute. And there you have the 8x12 back. Parker on the porch design. On the bye. I love it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button.